welcome a friendly church, uh, Middletown Seventh-day Adventist Church. And first, I would like to thank God, our Almighty, for everything He had done for me in my life. I didn't expect to be here, uh, for example, thinking about 20 years ago. I never thought that I would stand here in a land where I never thought about going. You know, I have accent, just like, you know, our preacher last, last week. <laughs> uh, we are a combination of people from all over the world. I'm so blessed to be here today. And uh, I am thankful for what he had done in my life. I'm thankful for what he's been doing in my life. I'm thankful for what he planned for me in my life. I again want to welcome all the visitors uh, who are present with us in person and online to come together to celebrate a special community Thanksgiving today. Together we can make a special day. Amen. As today we are celebrating also the seventh day that God has created, the Sabbath, uh, that he sanctified for us, uh, that he can communion with his people, we can thank him, and we can remind ourselves that who created us, who not only formed us, but also brought us back to redeem us from our sin, and aren't we give thanks to God every day? Amen. I would like to invite God to be with us. Of course, I know He's with us, but I want to dedicate this time so that His name may be glorified. Let's bow our heads once again as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that You are willing to dwell with us and spend time with us on this Sabbath morning. I thank you for all the people that you brought here in person and online. I pray that, Lord, we may find a way to give thanks in all circumstances. Help me and use me once again. I'm an empty vessel, but I'm willing for you to be used. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Many times, even as Christians, we don't give thanks, we don't show thankful to our fellow human beings, we don't give thanks enough to our God. We didn't appreciate each other even though, you know, we live with our loved ones that are close to us. Uh, Middletown has a custom to greet each other. Uh, we have a greeting time. We give our smile and we shake hands, we ask what's going on, especially this week, uh, Thanksgiving time. But we can take another few moments at this point. We don't have to get up from your seat, but if you sit next to your husband or wife or your sons or daughters, your relatives or people that you don't know, I would like us to say at least one something nice that you appreciate for that person. Can we do just for a few moments something, at least one thing that you appreciate for the people that are sitting next to you? Thank you so much. I noticed that it is so difficult to appreciate someone without exchanging smile, isn't it? It is so difficult to appreciate someone without exchanging smiles. The more we appreciate each other, the brighter we make our environment. God created us in his own image as we see in Genesis, especially in chapter 1, verse 27. That's why we are like God in some way. 
God also has emotions. He can get angry. He has humor. He, he smiles. He enjoys music. And sometimes he feels sad, very sad. Just like we smile with someone that appreciates us. Sometimes we need to give more appreciation to God for what he had done to us. Can we say amen to that? And God also appreciate when we give thanks. And are we supposed to give thanks only in our good times, only in Thanksgiving season? We are not, right? We have blessings every day in our life. I don't know how, you know, God lead our week, our preparation for today. Uh, I did not communicate with um, Vince, he had the exact same verse that I was intended to read this morning. And uh, it is found in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. We all heard at least one time the story of 10 lepers who healed by Jesus. As they were walking, as Jesus and his disciples were walking from uh, uh, Galilee to uh, Judea, to Jerusalem, they have to go through uh, a town, a Samarian's town. And if you look at the map, uh, the distance between uh, the, the Galilee and uh, Judea, it was almost about uh, 10 miles. And they have to travel by walking. It takes some time. And of course, they have to visit some villages of uh, Samaria. And uh, when you look at the history, who lived in Galilee? If you uh, read uh, the book uh, of Second Kings, uh, you can see that in Galilee, there were occupied by kings, uh, especially the kings of Israel. You see also the story of kings of Judah. So most of the kings you see in the books of the, 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 the kings, you will see that they did not do well. They actually do it evil in the sight of God. They were following the footsteps of Jeroboam. I don't know why the name of Jeroboam was repeated over and over again when I look up. Actually, Jeroboam was the first king of Israel because they divide into Israel and Judah. He was the first king and he did not do well. He did not follow God's way. He was the son of King Ahab. You know his mother, right? So he led the children of Israel. He led the Israelites into idolizing uh, uh, you know, images. He built uh, high places. And whenever uh, other kings be after him, when it referred back, you will see that um, they were following Jeroboam's footsteps. A lot of times you see that. And what happened was um, that Galilee was eventually taken over by Assyrians. Before that, they were kings of Israel that ruled even just six months. Some of them actually they ruled just for one month. They kill each other. They conspire each other. And eventually they were taken by the Assyrians. And these people from Galilee, they have to migrate to Assyria. And some non-Jewish people have to come in. And then this Galilee was eventually occupied by people of mix, like people who believe in God and people who do not believe in God. So the actual Jew, Jewish people did not really consider this Galilean to be the high class. They referred as, you know, the Bible even refers as uh, Gentiles of Galilee. So what happened when Jesus went through this uh, Samaria, he found or these 10 lepers saw Jesus and they saw the power that Jesus has and they cry out and ask for healing. And these 
10 lepers were a mixture of not just the Jewish people, but also some of our Samaritans. And since the Jewish people looked down the Gentiles very low, um, they really don't want to do anything with them. They want, don't want to mingle with them. But at the same time, these lepers, they don't have a choice. They were driven out from the village. They have to stay separate and they have to mingle with people that they actually look down for. Um, but then, what happened? Um, Jesus was willing to heal all of them, isn't it? He did not show any partiality because he showed compassion to these lepers. And uh, you can see that um, Jesus asked in verse 17 uh, of Luke 17, Jesus asked, where not all ten, ten clans? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner, which they actually looked down for it? And he said, um, he said to him, to, his, to this Samaritan, go rise and go, your fate made you well. Although we come to church today, we know that, and most of us, we believe that Sabbath is a day that God set aside to worship Him and to fellowship with one another. But our works cannot make us righteous. Our works cannot save ourselves. We all are sinners. Spiritually, we all are lepers in some way. Think about yourself if you want to be honest. There are a lot of sins that we still hold on, right? Are there any weak that you never cuss? Are there any weak that you never show hatred to one person at least? We are spiritually lepers. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus left his heavenly home and came to us as a human being to save us. He came to us to save the human race for you and for me. For the Gentiles, for the blacks, for the whites, for the Asians, for the Hispanics, whatever race you may belong, God, save us. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? In one of our Bible studies um, a few weeks ago, we were studying the book of Revelation. And I remember, I can't forget that particular uh, chapter. It talks about the new Jerusalem. It talks about the new Jerusalem. It was in Revelation 21. Church, what book I just mentioned? Revelation 21, right? Sometimes we need to look ahead, right? For us to be able to thankful for Jesus. To overlook our circumstances. And see what God has prepared for us. In Revelation 21, in verse 1 it says, Then I saw a new heaven, a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared. And there was no sea. During when John was writing this, the book of Revelation, he was surrounded with a big, big sea, Arabian Sea. He looked backwards, he saw a sea. He looked, when he got up in the morning, he saw a big sea. Before he sleep, in the evening, all he saw was sea. Sea was a symbol for him that separate him from his loved ones. He wanted to go and visit his loved ones, the churches in Asia Minor. He wants to go and meet them and encourage them, but he could not because the sea was a separator. And I do not know if this is a literal sea or maybe it could be the things that separate us from our loved ones, right? Can all be a sea here. 
And in verse 2 it says, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It was prepared like a bride dressed for her husband. And in verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now God presence is with his people, and he will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tears from our eyes, and there will be no more death, sadness, crying, or pain, because all the old ways are gone. How many times we heard about the pain and suffering of this world? A lot of us were suffering because of that we can't come to church, right? When you look at the world news, you see chaos. When I look at the news this morning, uh, shopping mall fire had killed so many people in Pakistan. Hundreds of police raid properties of Hamas in Germany. It's going on and on, right? People just shot dead. Just in Louisville, so many things have happened. It's difficult in this situation, right? To give thanks to God. But there are times, you know, we could not give thanks to God because of our ego. Because of our ego, because of our pride. How do we get pride? How, go, how, how are we becoming proud Sometimes I wonder, it is because we know much more than the others, right? We, ex we assume that we know much more than the others. Our knowledge sometimes makes us becoming proud. And our experience makes us becoming proud. And we're prone to have attitude and ego which remove our simplicity and humility of our hearts. In order to trigger our gratitude, we will require something bigger, right? When you see uh, food on our table, when you look at, you know, the place that we stay, that we are provided with a place to sleep, we felt like we all figure out where it comes from. We thought that it is our right and our, as a result of our hard earning. If we don't have them, we demand from God and we complain. It is easy to give thanks when everything goes well. What about during challenging times? This week is a very trying time for a lot of us. You're preparing for your family for Thanksgiving. You're preparing for traveling. I saw a lot of new faces today. We are so much welcome. You uh, come back even next year. Uh, it is a a hard week for a lot of us because some of our relatives, our loved ones are in hospital during this Thanksgiving. And we know that some of our loved ones pass away during this time. It's so difficult. I have a dear friend, uh, a family who joined us in Louisville just about a year ago, uh, a muso friend. And... Um, when I know that, when I came to know that I'm going to speak today, I asked her to sing a song, and I gave the song. Um, she haven't heard the song before. It, it's challenging for her, uh, for sure. But um, she told me about a week ago, oh, after she thought like she may have to choose another song back and forth, she said, ah, oh, I'm ready. I'm going to sing. And I, I was so grateful. I thank God for it. And then, a um, few days before, their son, their young son, Elijah, has to be hospitalized because of pneumonia. She has to be in the ICU. And then, I don't even have to ask her. I know that it's going to be impossible for her to come and sing. And, uh, but praise the Lord. Thank you everybody for your prayers. We see in our prayer list, Elijah, baby. Um, but today, to give glory to God, she came and she wants to render a song for us. Her name is uh, Makimi. Uh, and I will call upon her before I continue my speech. And the title of the song is Thank You, Lord, 
for the trial that come on my way. Sounds that the 
Thank you, Lord, for the trials. Thank you, Lord, for the trials. For those people who give God's glory, who let the Spirit control their lives, even in hard times, are the ones that will give glory to God. Amen. Amen. Why God allow trials on our way? He wants us to be fully dependent on Him. When our worldly grips are removed, we look for helper beyond human strength. That is where we could finally learn to depend on God. And we need to pray hard and ask that God will help us. Do you think it is good for us to depend on God? Yes, certainly, right? Why did the scripture say in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, money is the root of all evil? Amen? Please, please don't say amen. <laughs> it says, love for money is the root of all evil, right? Money in itself, something wrong in that. But love for money, anything that we put above God is something that we idolize. Something that we put above God. When we do that, we commit the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Right? So in order for us to change our priority in the right order, God allows suffering in our lives. Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. So when we face trials in our life, sometimes we ask, why God? Which means we thought that we did everything right, right? That is exactly is the time that God wants us to promote to our next level. When we did everything right and something happened in our life, that is the time we need to give thanks to God. That is the time that God wants us to put us into the next level. He wants to promote our life. Look at the life of Job. His before life and after life. You found in Job chapter 42 verse 10, it says, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. When I read Romans 8, 28, it's not easy text at times even as Christians. It says, and we know that all things, it says all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This question we should ask when we consider this verse. We must ask first, are our hearts in, in line with God's purpose? In other words, do I put myself first or we say, let your will be done in me, not my will. You see, Stephen, when he was about to be stoned, he looked up heaven. And I believe he said in his heart, Lord, I'm being persecuted in your name. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me this privilege that I could suffer in your name. And heaven opened, heaven's door was open. And his fear are all gone because he put God first. Do you want to have the power? Do you want to have strength? Nehemiah chapter 8 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you can give thanks in all circumstances, that's when God is going to give us strength and power that we need it. There will be a day that all people who find a way to thank to God in all circumstances will get together in a beautiful shore. We will have tears of joy and thankfulness to our Creator God. We will look back for all the times that He had led our way, that He didn't even understand what's going on today. 
We will thank him for the good times that he gave us. We will thank him for letting us raise in a good home. Choosing a good home for us. But not only that, some of us will thank him for letting us raise in a poor and wretched condition. Because we'll thank him for being an orphan from our earthly parents. Through that, we can experience his love and his care. All our questions will be answers. We may ask, why God? You put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. If we would have not put there, we would not have faced trials, pain, and suffering in this world. Thinking this way, we don't understand the bigger picture of God's plan. This is a process of cleansing the whole universe. It is a process of setting an example of the rest of the history of the universe. It is a way that all God's creation could understand the true character of Almighty to give just a glimpse of what it is like to walk away from the protection of God for at least, at least 6,000 years. 6,000 years of trials and pain seem so long for us, right? But in, in comparison to eternity, it is nothing, my dear friends. It is nothing. We'll be thanking God for cutting short of human life from almost 1,000 years. If you look at Genesis, right? People live almost 1,000 years, cutting short to 70 to 80 years. Some of us, we live just a few years, right? But we will thank God for letting us to be born in this world. Because we will understand better that our existence is a privilege for us to live for how many years? Eternity. Sometimes we need to look at things in a brighter side, isn't it? I'm so thankful that in order for us to have a celebration of thanksgiving in this church, there are some friends, some of them are not from our church. Some of them did not go to church. And some of them are from my family and friends from India, from all walk of life. Um, they were contributing their videos, clip uh, that I put together, how they give thanks. Let us see that video clip. And then uh, I would like to also ask if anyone among us on this day, on this Sabbath hour, on celebrating in celebrating of our community Thanksgiving, if you would like to say a few words, maybe just a short one, to give thanks, whoever you want to give thanks to, and what are you thankful for, we'll give a chance for you all. Now let's see the video first. Hi, my name is Nina, and I'm thankful for my family and my friends and my health. I'm thankful that I get to come play tennis, and um, I'm thankful for this community. I moved here three years ago. I'm thankful for this uh, Thanksgiving. Is, uh, thankful for my family and my friends, and that I'm still able to move around and, and play sports. Uh, I say uh, most thankful to God for keeping me and uh, just bringing me in and being my friend. I'm grateful for my beautiful wife, 40 plus years of marriage, and she stuck with it and helped me grow and develop, and she served me so well. There's so many things that I'm thankful for. I've been so blessed in my life. God has blessed me in so many ways. One of the ways is I'm a tennis player and I've got to know Mark, and I uh, treat him as one of the greatest blessings ever as far as my tennis community and what a good guy. He inspires me all the time in his journey. And uh, I hope we'll, I pray for all you guys and all your struggles and 
all the blessings, um, you know, and all the trials and tribulations that, that each of us have. I'm very thankful for my friends and relatives and my families, and I'm very thankful God has given me a good parents. Uh, from the time we were small, they taught us good things, many good lessons. Uh, just because of them, till now I can practice well-regulated life. And of all the blessings, I'm very thankful God has given me uh, uh, lovely children, Grace and Stephen. And also, I'm very thankful uh, for giving me a good husband and uh, his God-fearing man and responsible father. I'm very thankful that I have a wonderful family and our home environment is completely stress-free and we are all attending the same church so especially Sabbath it's always a blessing and uh, we live a very simple life and because of that uh, we count our blessings yeah I am very thankful for my parents and my sister I am also thankful for the school that I go to because it is Adventist school and also I I am very happy for the place we live because it is very open air and not in the city. I am very thankful for my family, my grandparents, my parents and my brothers. They are so nice. And I am also very thankful for my friends. They, they have been with me in every situation. And I am also thankful for my kids. I'm Mary from India. I'm thankful for the beautiful Sabbath day every week that God sets aside for me uh, besides the hectic week with lots of stress and tensions. I'm thankful that I can have a communion with God, uh, with my family and friends, and also with other uh, God's people. I'm thankful uh, for the life uh, which I got through Christ Jesus. And since I have Him, He has been my strength, uh, even in times of trouble. And only because of Him, I can be thankful for everything that I don't even have right now. Recently, my father died of cancer, and uh, even though this is a very difficult time for us, I'm very grateful for all the love and support that we have received from my family members and also from the community. And uh, I also know this is possible because of God, and I'm very thankful to him as well. I'm just grateful to be here instead of um, having the nursing home to look forward to like like I did last year. I'm home this year, and I'm very grateful and thankful. I'm most thankful for waking up this morning. That gentle finger of love that woke me up this morning. I opened up my eyes. I could see. I could breathe on my own. I just thank the Lord for that. I wasn't in pain. I thank him for the reasonable amount of health and strength. I, I thank him for food on my table and I just thank him for being able to be in you all's presence two or three times a week. I just thank the Lord for that. Right, I am grateful to the great God in heaven for my family. Uh, they, he has kept them safe throughout this year. Uh, we've had no major tragedies, uh, and, and we just thank him for that. Thank you for our church family. Uh, we thank you for the time that we had Buddy with us, and uh, he'll be missed greatly. But, uh, you know, we'll see him again. So I'm thankful that we have eternal life to look forward to after this life. The many that we have lost through the years, we'll see again. We're promised that and uh, look forward to that. But, yes, thank you, good Lord, for everything that you've given us. Uh, more time, uh, better knees, better hips. He's brought us through a whole lot, you know. He's given us the technology to survive uh, with less pain and uh, succeed for another year. Thank you. I'm especially thankful for Jesus, all that he did to save me, how he died for me. Grateful for the Holy Spirit. Also grateful for my health. Uh, you know, I have to go get out and around, even at 78 years old. Mm. Um, Amen. I'm relatively little pain. I look at all the people around me, all the suffering. I'm so grateful for all he's given me and done for me. I am so thankful this year. Because I'm thankful all the time, not only just on Thanksgiving Day, I'm thankful every single day. God has been so good to me. I remember uh, last year around this time of Thanksgiving, uh, I wasn't feeling well, even though I kind of halfway prepared my dinner. But the Saturday after Thanksgiving, I had to be taken to the emergency room. 
I had a heart problem, which is what they call AFib. So I, I've been doing well since then. One of my medications has been decreased, which I'm happy for, and it's all due to the, uh, the blessings of the Lord. I'm thankful for my family and my friends. I'm thankful for the church community and what they've done for me and for others. And most importantly, I'm thankful for God for giving life on this earth. Sandy and I are so appreciative and so grateful for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's been a tough six, seven months, but knowing that you all are there for us and sending your love and your prayers for us has made all the difference in the world. We, we just couldn't have made it without you. Thank you. I thank you for God. I am thank you for my Bible, and I am thank you for 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 Abba and Mommy, and thank you for having, and I am thank you for my grandmas, and and I am thankful for my cousins. I'm thankful for for my friends at school and then my teachers. Um, not all of these people who testified their thankfulness are life were not 100% smooth, right? Some of them lost their loved ones. And, but those people who can give thanks in all circumstances are the ones that are fortunate people. At this time, if anyone like to say, what are you thankful for? Um, We'll open for a few minutes, and Mike will be passed around. Please raise your hand, and then, yes, uh, Sandy. Okay. I'm thankful. Um, just, I'm going to reiterate some of what Lee said. I'm just thankful for my church family. I don't know what I would do without you all. And he's had a large, a, a really difficult last few months. And, you know, only God knows the, the end. And um, we have to trust in him. But I just want to thank all of you all for all your prayers and everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Tanya. Uh, uh, I also would like to um, just thank God for Middletown. Um, this is just a wonderful place. It has been from the first day we came here um, over 13 years ago. Um, I'd, also li I'd also like to thank God for helping my family to reacclimate to life back in the States. Um, and I started off, some of you have heard this <laughs> many times, I'm, I apologize, started off the year teaching in JCPS and it was awful. <laughs> and I just want to thank God because last Monday I began teaching at um, a private school and I have enjoyed going to work and Amen. just teaching all week and <laughs> just that stress is off my shoulder and I I really, truly appreciate God for doing that for me. Amen. I just want to say I'm thankful for the church as well. I'm thankful that everyone has ex accepted me as a new member this year. I'm thankful that Jesus has made his sacrifice so that we might all see him. Amen. Um, and I'm thankful for my family and my husband for all that they do for us. And again, I'm just thankful that God has given us Jesus. Amen. Amen. Rose. I am so thankful for Jesus. Because it was, if it wasn't for Jesus coming down to die for us, we won't be here today. I am so, so thankful for my family. My husband, my seven kids, my nine grandkids, it's a blessing. I am thankful. Last night I went to bed fine, healthy, but in the middle of the night I got so sick. 
I was so sick. I had this terrible stomach pain. I don't know where it came from. I had a restless night. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I prayed. I turned around, I looked at my husband. He kept rolling and looking at me. He's like, what's going on? I said, I'm sick. I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm sick. And uh, I just prayed. But you will not believe it. I woke up this morning and not one single pain in my stomach. And I'm so grateful. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God. Thank you. There's one in the back. Yeah. All right. For, for that, um, that I have um, a family that loves me and a place to sleep. Amen. 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 I think uh, one in the back. And then uh, we have two more. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Uh, Happy Sabbath, everyone. So we're visiting from Pennsylvania. My daughter, Abby, and I. But this one, she lives here in Louisville. Did I say it right? <laughs> okay. So I'm thankful because this is the first time here in Kentucky. And... Uh, Probably, yeah, I'll be re relocating in the future just to live here. But I'm thankful because a few years ago, one of my children, I have four, um, was in so much troubles out there and um, street drugs and stuff like that. And I was praying so hard at 2 a.m. in the morning every night. Um, just forgot to save my child. And one day, just a Thanksgiving day, I received this phone call saying, come and get your child here. So I drove there. So, I don't know, excited? No, that's not the word. So thankful. So Amen. I went to get my child there, always dead. Amen. Even the smell, like dead, dead people. So oh, I thank God because he rescued my child. That Amen. Day. Amen. Thank you for sharing us um, that you th what you're thankful for, for for the Lord. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm also. Um, I also want to say how thankful I am to. I also want to say how thankful I am to God for His protection for my family. My two daughters, my wife, um, our extended family, my grandmother, my, my, my wife's, my in-law, and my father-in-law who is in Ghana at the moment. I also want to thank God for his protection when we went to Ghana for a, man, a month that he brought us back safely and um, everybody's doing well. So we're, we're very grateful. Amen. One more? Yes. Hi, church. Oh. Happy Sabbath. Um, I want to thank God um, for our church family that I can go anywhere in the world, and there's, they're always there. It's so good to have you guys. Um, I also want to thank God because, like, he has, like, the way he answers prayers is, is like, wow, unbelievable. When he's, when he's quiet, and that's when you least expect it, but then he turns around, and he's like, you know, he's working behind the scenes, and everything that's in, in, in our lives, he's, like, taking care of it, and I just want to thank him for that. Amen, amen. Um all right. Um, we have Annette, and then lastly, Kevin. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The many blessings that... I'm thankful for the many blessings that God has bestowed on me this year. I'm Amen. thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the blessings that are coming to me next year. And the less sickness that I have will have next year. He's Amen. been around me all years. He's, he's pulled me through, I think, about three sicknesses, two operations. I'm still here, and he's going to pull me through a lot more. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Kevin? All right. Uh, in my family name, Valentina, Miranda, Lita, Kevin, my wife, Alejandra, and I, Every day we need to be thankful because every day we can breathe. We can stay every Sabbath here. But in special, my family and I, we want to be 
content with our God. Mm -hmm. Because every year you have in front of you different challenges. Some are good challenges, others are bad challenges in your life. We are humans. But this year, uh, we are family. We, we had in front of a family really bad challenges in our life. But was hard, was really hard for us. But when you believe in God, when you are in front of God and you receive many blessings, you say, I don't know in what moment we can finish with this process, with this hard process in our life. But through the years in this country, of course, we say that when you have with God, everything is possible. Amen. Maybe you can see on the way, no, we need to lose. We can do that. But in one day, in one week, in one month, everything can change mm -hmm. in your favor as family. So my experience with my family in this nine year that we live in this country, in this our second country, we can say with evidence yes. that when you stay with God, when you believe in our God, that is a, the powerful God, you say, you always win. You always will be in the first place to demonstrate that our God is amazing. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you all for sharing. I'm sure a lot of us wants to share. How many of us wants to share, but we don't have time? How many, how many of us? All of us have something to share. I, even Kevin, they have a wonderful testimony. And sometimes we need to share that testimony to give glory and thank for what he has done for us. And that can increase that kind of testimony. Let me say a prayer. Father in heaven, we express our thanks to our friends, our, our, our family. And not only that, Father, we express our thanks to you today. Please, Lord, accept that. And give us much more of your work in our life that we will be prepared for your soon coming. Not only that, Father, we are exciting to live in the new Jerusalem. Bless us until then. In Jesus' name, amen.